take a good look at those shining skyscrapers. A mid-sized city in America, right? It's actually in Africa. Nairobi, the capital of Kenya. It's a busy place. Multinational companies, investors, buying and selling, a growing economy. And the middle class here is booming. This is where you'll find Kenya's middle class on the move in downtown Nairobi. Over the years, it developed a reputation for violence and crime. In fact, its nickname was Nairobi. You wouldn't want to wander around here at night, but during the day, this is the place to be if you're doing business. It is much easier to do business in Kenya than ever before because of government deregulation. That stimulated economic growth and more people started making money, a lot of money. Nina Kenyani is one of these people, and she is about to leave for work. A quick breakfast, standing up while reading her Blackberry and exchanging a few words with her maid. A few minutes later, and she's commuting. The cup of coffee, the newspaper, no need for the steering wheel because she's also got the driver, a bonus that comes with doing well in a country where labor costs are cheaper. Nina is the branch manager of a bank. Like any other commuter, she's contemplating the day ahead. So I'm just thinking about what sort of uh, strategies or tactics we, we're going to use for the day to get customers into the bank, to get customers to open accounts with us. By 8 a.m., she's at her desk, reading emails. Then her first meeting of the day. And it's meant to be on a daily basis. Nina's life and her success on the job reflect a trend the growing wealth of the middle class. In Kenya, they amount to about 10% of the urban population. So, an estimated 1.5 million people nationwide. One of the largest middle class groups in sub-Saharan Africa. No, that's a number of transactions. Witness that restless entrepreneurial spirit at Nairobi's Java House. The staff have a reputation for being friendly and the service is fast. Java, as they call it here, was actually started 10 years ago by American Kevin Ashley and his partners. Java House is now a multi-million dollar company. Ashley is not surprised by the rise of the middle class. He says when it comes to business, Kenyans get it. In that first two weeks of opening our first branch, we showed our guys how to make a good cappuccino. And within two weeks, they were making them better than we could. The company pretty much runs itself these days, and it's run mainly by Kenyans. James started out as a waiter. He's now the senior manager of this store, and he won't stop there. I take this as a, a place whereby I'll be able to build my future and uh, be able to learn a lot regarding coffee and uh, you know, be able to, to, to make, take it to a, a notch higher. A quick scan around the tables, and you can see that the majority of people are Kenyans, over 50%. And it wasn't like that 10 years ago. To understand what's driving the middle class in Kenya, you have to talk about education. Kenya's universities turn out thousands of graduates every year. Confident? We're the people who are going to build this country. Yeah, we're going to contribute to the society, to the growth of the society. Optimistic? I'm up going. I'm climbing higher, yeah, and I'm looking forward to being the higher class, exactly. Which helps explain how Nina and her husband Jim were able to achieve all they have, a five-bedroom house in an upmarket neighborhood, their two children at a private school. Both Nina and Jim are university educated. My parents had to work hard to put us through school, put us through college, and... Uh, that gets inculcated in you. You come out of that system and you also, um, naturally, you, you, you drive things. You could almost say they live a typically American life. And being rich in Kenya, especially with the cheaper labor, can make for an even easier life. Kenya's privileged, they're also discovering the other benefits of having money to spend. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The market has responded with chic bars and nightclubs. There's also a move to this country's great outdoors. Kenya's famous game parks, traditionally the realm of foreign tourists. Most Kenyans simply couldn't afford it, and so they were as rare in a park like this as those endangered rhinos over there. That is changing too. 
Joseph Muya is a successful game park owner. You cannot stop it. The sky has opened. The middle class of our people, they are landed. Wild Africa, literally just outside the window. For them, getting there isn't about the cost anymore. The challenge? Yeah, they set me up. Getting away from the office. I'm Martin Seamungle reporting for World Focus in Nairobi.